Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praise and glory unto Yahweh, Baha Shem Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem Rechachodash. Double honours to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone that rule well. And Shalom to you, Elect Darkim, that be pushing this word. I should say, hopeful Elect Darkim, that be pushing this word around the globe in faith and in truth and in sincerity. As always, I begin by saying we are the real Hebrew Israelites. The real Israelites, you so called Negroes, Latinos, Hispanics, and Native Americans, West Indians, and West Africans predominantly. However, you are going to get Israelites who look like the other nations because Israel has been scattered amongst all people, so therefore we're going to look like all the other nations now. But if your seed line by your father goes back to the man in the Bible who was named Israel, then you too are an Israelite, no matter what you look like. So I'm just going to do a brief lesson here, Lord willing, um, on an observation I've made. Now, this observation wasn't made uh, just recently. It's something that I've, I've been observing for quite some time good few years I should say but I just felt through the spirit I should speak on it now I'm not sure what I'm going to entitle this lesson but it's basically about the filthy conversation of the wicked and the base nature of Edomites so um let me get into it so you can see a screenshot from uh uh my PlayStation 4 I like to play video games that's how I get down when I'm chilling and um I was playing Mortal Kombat 11 online now for those of you who don't know Mortal Kombat is a fighting game, very popular fighting game from the 90s. Um, and it's pretty cool, I enjoy fighting games personally, so I play it quite a bit. Now, when I meet these different people online, I see people have these different, you know, account names that they call themselves. And something that I've noticed, and this is what the, the, this um, video is predominantly about, is basically how demons are within people. And they're controlling people's thoughts and controlling people's actions now the reason why i say this is because um as you can see on here this is one of the opponents that i faced online now i don't know this guy but um as you can see at the top left of the screen it says his profile name and his profile name is called sinful minds now you got to ask yourself what person in their right mind would create an online account and call it sinful minds what prompts a person to do something like that now, when you understand the nature of this world, you understand that the vast majority of these people who aren't in the truth do indeed have sinful minds. Their minds have been given over to all um, all manner of wickedness. So therefore, they're living in this earth, acting out all of their carnal desires of the flesh and not considering the things of the spirit, such as the law, statutes and commandments of the holy scriptures um, and righteousness in general. Now, this is just one character that I met online. Let me see if I can find another photograph of another one. So here's another character that I faced online uh, on this game, Mortal Kombat 11. This guy calls himself Torturer of Humans. Now, think about that. What person in their right mind is going to create an online account and call it Torturer of Humans? Now, my answer is that it's the demons that are within these people that are prompting them to do these things. Now, this doesn't just apply to um, online fighting games or, you know, online Mortal Kombat, which is what I was playing. This applies all throughout the internet. When you see people on YouTube, you look at their screen names, oftentimes you can see that's an indicator of where this person's mind's at. You know, if you go on internet forums, you see the same things. You know, you see these weird-ass screen names with these people doing, you know, having these weird-ass screen names. Now, I want to expand upon this point a bit further because just early on today, I was chilling out, playing a bit. I, get inv I got invited into a group game, uh, a group game session. Now, recently, I bought myself a headset and a mic so I could listen to conversations while I'm playing with other players. Now, personally, I don't really like to talk too much when I'm playing because, you know, I just like to play the game and, and be about my business. I'm not really looking to you know, make friends online, so to speak. But one guy, you know, invited me into this game. Never met this guy in real life. I've only ever played against him on, online. But he told me that he had two of his friends in, in, in a group with him and that they'd only got the game like three days ago. So they've only just started playing it and they were looking to have some casual matches and they invited me to join. So I was like, I was like okay, cool. And when I joined the game, he said, oh, we can turn the group chat settings on. So I turned my headset on, I was listening to the group chat, and what did I hear in this group chat? One of these guys, who I, I suspect is probably, they're probably Edomites, one of these guys says, oh, um, I just want to hear a motivational speech, he says. I just want to play this. So in the background, he's playing some, I suppose it's a YouTube clip 
based upon Toy Story. You know, the Toy Story film by Disney Pixar with um, uh, the characters Woody and Buzz Lightyear. Well, this was an audio narration of a um, basically a very vile and filthy base, low-level, low-brow, low-minded joke rendition of Toy Story where basically the narrator was talking about Woody being inserted into someone's anal cavity and how how pleasurable it felt and how he never never knew that he could feel all these kind of sensations. This was the the vile <clears throat> it's like here. The vile, filthy and nasty conversation that this person was playing in the background on purpose so everybody in the, else in the chat could listen to it. Now me, I didn't blow my cover. You know, obviously, you know, we're supposed to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. I remained silent, but this shit was playing in the background and it was so, so vile and so nasty. And I thought to myself, you know what, man, these Edomites, they're always like this, man. They're always weird. They're always making these gay jokes and sexual innu sexual innuendo jokes when even when things have got nothing to do with that thing at all. For example, we're playing the fucking fighting game, for goodness sake. That's about as far away from... Um, your sexual fetishes as, you know, the East is from the West. You know, I'm just here to play the game. I'm not here to hear about this fucking um, disgusting acts of sodomy on this stupid um, fantasy role play with these Toy Story characters. It was ridiculous. And furthermore, why would you take these, these supposedly children's cartoon characters and insert them into a situation such as that, which is completely filthy and degenerate? Why would you do that? I mean, what, what, what is, what prompts you to do this? So I'm sitting here trying to play the game with this filth in the back. And I thought, you know what, man, I'm out of this. And as soon as I, my match was over, I was like, you know what, man, I've got, I've got to go. Yeah, see you guys later. And that was it for me because it's like, why would you want to open up your mind to such violent, filthy conversation? And, um, yeah, so I'm just sh sharing that little brief testimony because, um, you, you either might some fucking weirdos, man absolute weirdos and let me get some scriptures to expound upon my point so um where should we start i want to start with um let's see what we got second peter 2 and 7 is a good place to start i'll come back to this in a bit So this is the book of 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 7, which says, let me start up from, um, 2 Peter 2 and 5, it says, And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. And that's what these Edomites, Edomites who I was playing against were, they were ungodly, man. Thinking it's funny, thinking this is a sport to make, make these kind of, nasty sodomy jokes so we continue it says in second peter 2 and 6 and turning the cities of sodom and gomorrah into ashes condemn them with an overthrow making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly and delivered just lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked for that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds the Most High knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. So these guys who thought it was uh, sport and fun to make these kind of depraved, um, depraved uh, you know, audio recordings and to be playing them in the background so everybody in the chat can hear, they, they've got a judgment coming for them. Because those who, um, those who condone wickedness and who are aligned with wickedness are going to receive the same punishment for those who commit those acts of wickedness. You know, you're supposed to condemn these things and not have no part with these things. So, um, let me move on to Job chapter 30 and verse 8. Uh, I'm going to start here, but I'm going to read back up. This is speaking of the Edomites, Job 30 and 8. It says, they were children of fools, yea, children of base men. They were viler than the earth. Now let me read up. Job 30 and 1, speaking of the Edomites. But now they that are younger than I have been in division, whose fathers I would have disdained to have set with the dogs of my flock. Yea, whereto might the strength of their hands profit me in whom old age is perish, was perished? 
For want and famine they were solitary, fleeing into the wilderness in former time, desolate and waste, who cut mallows by the bushes and juniper roots for their meat. They are driven forth from among men, they cried after them as a thief, to dwell in the clefts of the valleys, in, claves of the, in the caves of the earth, and in the rocks. Among the bushes they brayed, under their nettles they were gathered together. They were children of fools, yea, children of base men, and they were viler than the earth. And that's what this conversation was. It was viler than the earth. Now let me get one more. I'm going to go to Matthew chapter 12 and 43. So speaking about what happens to spirits after they're cast out. Unclean spirits, which is demons. Uh, Matthew 12 and 43 goes like this. It says, When an unclean spirit is gone out of a man, it walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return unto my house from whence I came out, meaning the person that the demon was cast out from. And when he is come, if he find it empty, swept and garnished. So once the demon's cast out of a person, the person's, you know, rel considered relatively clean, pro relatively clean in comparison to their previous estate when the demon was on them. So the demon comes back and it says, Matthew 12 and 44, then he saith, I will return to my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be unto also this wicked generation. Now let me break that down. What that basically means is if you've got demons on you, causing you to have these filthy, nasty and you know, unclean thoughts such as, you know, committing acts of sodomy or whatever else. If that if that demon leaves you, if it gets cast out, it's gonna go away for a while, but eventually it will take seven demons stronger than itself and it will come back and, and, and dwell in you again. And your last estate will be worse than the first, because then you'll have even more demons plaguing your mind. Now this is why this is a spiritual battle. You know, uh let me get Ephesians six and eleven. And this is the thing, if you're not fighting a spiritual battle, you're open to being, your mind being overrun with these demons. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11 says, Put on that whole armour of the Most High that you may be able to withstand against the wiles of the devil. For you wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armour of the Most High, that you may be able to withstand the evil day, having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shed with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of the Most High praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So basically, this is how you battle these demons, by having the sword of the Spirit, knowing these scriptures and being able to see truth and see what things actually are for what they are, and not being caught up in the ways of this world. Let me get James 4 and 4. This is the book of James chapter 4 and verse 4. It says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with the Most High? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of the Most High. So all of this stuff is, you know, this filthy conversation of the wicked that we have to endure now. This is the ways of this world and we're not supposed to have any part with that. You know, because... um When you play along with that, like, Oh, he's just joking, he's just playing, all this kind of stuff. When you play into that... That's 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 a slippery slope, man. That's the beginning of the end. You, you, if you don't have standards and you don't take a stand against certain things, then you know what I mean. You're open to anything, and that's basically what these Edomites are. They're open to anything because they ain't spiritual people. They're carnal people. So, Lord willing, this short lesson has been edifying, and I've made the points that I needed to make. So, without giving all praise and all glory unto Yahweh, Baha Hashem Yahweh Shai, Baha Hashem Hakadosh. Double honours to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone that rule impeccable, impeccably well and teach the 100% truth according to the Holy Bible. And uh, with that, um, 
Shalom for now. Till the next lesson, I do, Lord willing. I say Shalom.